Agile release management is a very important doctrine in agile development because of the peculiarity that is presented by its incremental uh, delivery. In this video, we discuss the elements surrounding agile release management. The first thing we look at is incremental delivery. I don't think it even requires any explanation at all because we've made constant reference to this. Now, incremental delivery is the practice of delivering the solutions by installment through series of iterations. So deliverables increment, okay, uh -huh. by installment. That is typical of agile uh, delivery, okay? As the team is working on one end, the deliverables are also incrementing at the customer's end. Number two, release planning. Release planning is the practice of preparing a schedule on how the team is going to release feature increment to the client. Release planning is a very important aspect of agile development, okay, and uh, it's actually part of the initiation stage, something that is done during initiation, and the team creates a plan on how releases are going to be done uh, for the receiving client. Uh, for some Scrum projects, they may decide to release after every sprint. Some other teams may decide to combine one or two or three sprints before releasing to the client. I think much of that is informed by uh, how the client will want value to be delivered. If you work on Kanban projects that is feature driven, then releases are done based on the need of the client. It's is on a need basis. So how the client would want features to increment, uh, the client will communicate that through the product owner, and then the product will ensure that releases are done by that uh, rhythm. The next thing we look at under release management is product roadmap. Now a product roadmap is a visual representation of the product right from the vision or conception stage through its many stages down to final uh, delivery. So that presents us with a visual map. So we know the various stages, the milestones that exist uh, within the project from start to finish and how delivery is going to happen, how it's going to uh, uh, arrive at the clients. And we get all of that on a map or on a visual uh, chart then we come to minimum viable product mvp a term that was coined by frank robinson and popularized by steve blank and eric rice now when we say minimum viable product it is the smallest usable version of your product that contains the central idea of your innovation made available to its target users for the purposes of testing the validity of the idea measuring interest and to gain early feedback on its further development now this is a very great way of launching innovation based solutions whose values have not been tested on the market. They've never been validated on the market. And because they've not been validated on the market, you are not so sure if your target users will want it in the first place or how they would want it. Now, because you are not sure of if they would want it or how they would want it, the best way of approaching this development is going through the minimum viable product approach, where you just create a minimum version of your product idea, okay? And then put it out there and see how people respond to it, how people clamor after it, in order to gauge the interest, okay? If you do it that way, okay, number one, uh, it saves you the time because unlike this uh, con concept or proud to this concept what people would have done was to have built the whole thing the whole solution 
and then launched it into the market. And if the market says no, you've wasted resources, you've wasted your time doing all of that, assuming development took a long time, okay? And you were building that solution upon your own assumption, upon the way you think uh, people will like it, upon your own perceptions, okay? Which is not good. So what you do is to present a minimum version of your product, okay, which will require a, just a little amount of time and fewer resources to produce. And then um, your market would, 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 uh, would test the idea. They would use the, the product, that small uh, uh, version that you have released. And then the market will now give you the feedback in terms of how to develop the product further. And that is the minimum viable product. Very good. In terms of how they will develop the product further. Okay. Yes, so this way, the iteration happens between the project team and the marketplace. So the target users become a part of the development team, whether they are aware or not, they become a part of the development team. So based on their feedback, then we increment the solution, we increment the product. We use what they think, how they feel, how best the thing satisfies them to build up the product that is the minimum viable product okay now let me state something very important here now if what you are building and this uh, message goes out to medical practitioners especially those in pharmaceuticals okay who use empirical procedures to develop drugs vaccines and stuff like that okay if you are developing something that is highly sensitive to human life you can use this approach you can use the agile approach to develop it because uh initial prototype released may be poisonous or may be disastrous to human health so if you are doing that then you use the purely iterative life cycle you remember what we discussed in agile 2 understanding project management methodologies because agile in itself is a combination of an iterative life cycle and the incremental life cycle that is what forms agile okay but if you are developing something that is uh, intrinsically connected to human life and health okay then you have to take out the incremental component of it you can use the mvp approach and iterate between yourself and then the target users what you do is to iterate in your closet okay and build on successive prototypes because for such uh, outcomes you can only bring it out when you have approved of its outcome of how it will fare with humanity that is only when you can bring it out okay so uh, i keep making reference to COVID cases okay when they were developing the vaccine of COVID they did not create the first prototype and launch it into the market and say uh, people use it let's see how it works no okay you are releasing the first prototype to the market so, okay we are doing mvp so let's release the first prototype to the market let's see how many people survive and how many people die you can't do that okay and say based on the feedback we get then we can improve you can't do that the iteration must happen within uh closets okay so you take out the incremental bit of agile so that you can only have the iterative bit of agile standard and that is purely an iterative life cycle so with iterative life cycle remember that delivery is done at the end of the project just like waterfall that is how it is uh united to waterfall how it is common to waterfall delivery is done at the end after successive prototypes have been approved okay uh -huh. so for that one you create the first version and look for animals to test on creatures lizards cockroaches i know they will come after me but uh, i mean the those people you know who i'm talking about they'll come after me but at least it's better than testing on humans you use lizards you use mice and then you test the first prototype on them if it gives you the solution you are looking for now if not, then you, you, you improve. You keep improving on the prototype until you get it right. So you notice that 
COVID vaccine came out the first time to humanity when it could be, it was accurate to about 85%, okay? 80, 85%, 90%. That was when we started experiencing it, not when it was around 20% accurate. Because when it comes to human lives, you can use the minimum viable product approach. Uh, say you are testing with the market and then you're also using the market as part of the development process. Another area where lives are also connected is like the brake system in a car. You can use the MVP approach and say that we are trying to come out with an innovation system in the brake uh, system in a car. You can say that and then say that, okay, so we will do the initial version or the initial prototype and release it to the market and people should sit in their vehicles and test how it functions. No, that is too risky. You have to do successive prototypes within closets, okay? Uh, and keep improving on it and get it to uh, an almost perfect uh, condition before releasing it out in the market. When a solution's minimum viable product has been reasonably understood, when the market has now proven or validated the idea, when they have accepted the idea or when there is a green light that it will work, then the concept of minimum business increment takes over. Now, when we say minimum business increment, it is a continuous measurement of value with each increment. And it helps in determining if the team has captured the improvement. And it is also a decider on which aspect of the product needs to be pivoted if need be. So when we talk of minimum business increment, it's just the practice of uh, incrementing on your solution, building more value onto your product, okay? But take note that MBI is not only for the customer. It can be for the business. When we say we are releasing an increment, it is not always an increment that provides value to the customer. Sometimes that increment provides value to the business, okay? Think about an app whose recent increment uh, allows users to pay before assessing some features within the app. Maybe before then it was accessible, it was free. But the new increment that arrived uh, locked up all of those feature components, all right? And before you are able to access them, you have to what? Pay some few dollars before they open up. Now that is a feature increment, okay? But we would agree that this feature increment is increment that uh, provides value to the business behind the application. Okay, so MBI can also be value directed towards the business or key stakeholders or investors or sponsors. Okay, also take note that uh, MBI is not only for startups. It's not only for startup solution. It can be for existing products and services where you would want to uh, do further enhancement or further development to its features and functions, you also need to continue testing the value and ensure that you are getting your improvement right. The next thing we look at is the concept called Go Live. Now, Go Live is the period at which a new feature increment is released or becomes operational for end users. It's a very delicate moment. It's an all important moment at which the team's effort in producing that increment may be justified. The final concept we look at under release management is blackout times. Now you see, go live is a very delicate moment. That is when a new feature is being released to the system is very delicate and when we are about to release a new feature to the system it's very important for us to suspend all other changes being shipped to the system because we need a moment of calmness so that a new feature can be released to the end users through the system so blackout times is a negotiated settlement that prohibits all other changes to the system 
as a new solution is being released. Because when you allow other changes to the system to happen at the same time you are releasing that new feature increment, it may disrupt the system and then it may destabilize the system. But we don't want this to happen. Okay, so we suspend all other changes so that we can have that moment of calmness and introduce that new feature. If there is, uh, there is instability or there is a disruption to the system, uh, end users may attribute that to the new feature that has been released. Meanwhile, that may not be the case. Now, blackout times are typically negotiated when we are approaching a release threshold so that all team members who do this will understand that during that moment, no changes should be applied to the system. Remember, we are still training for your PMP project management certification. Join us for in-person classes in Ghana, wherever you are in the world, in Africa, Europe, America, you can also join our online sessions. Remember, we have a very strong and effective post-training system to get you to the finish line. Also get in touch if you want to pursue the professional Scrum Master certification, the certified Scrum Master or the Agile certified practitioner. Together, we will write that victory song. Thank you very much and see you in the next lesson.